Teachers of Reddit, what are some positive trends you have noticed in today's youth? As a general rule they are more understanding and forgiving if somebody is different. Don't get me wrong, some of them are still dicks to those kids, but it is a shrinking minority. Edit, wow, most upvoted comment of the day. Reading the comments it seems many many of you agree, that can only be a good thing. Agreed. Been teaching high school for 26 years. Students are much more accepting of differences. Much less overt homophobia, and the ones who would have been the least tolerant now keep their mouths shut, for the most part. Bullying still occurs though. Also, I find students more willing to challenge perceived harassment. This is what I tell people, if you go around spewing hate for different groups of people, no one will talk to you. You'll be that racist outcast that no one likes, except the other racist outcasts. You can't say something racist in front of people, because no one will laugh, and they will just look at you crazy. I try to convince people, that they will just look foolish, and lose any respect, that others has for them. It is clear the general population is not accepting of hate anymore. If you are hateful you will alienate yourself. Wisdom is respected, hatred is rejected. Go do what you want to, go be who you'll be. Be free to be other, be free to be free, be him or be her, and go forth with good luck. As long as you're happy, I don't give a fuck. Hell, when I was in school, graduated in 2010, our schools were super accepting. Like, now thinking back I remember a large group of the popular kids being like aggressively anti-bullying. The kind of kids that would accept most anyone, and actively confronted bullies. And that behavior wasn't just confined to them. People had individual problems with each other, and sometimes that split groups of friends, but that rarely turned into bullying or real conflict. I remember even as early as middle school we were, gently, trying to convince a boy, to come out of the closet, because we all knew, and no one was going to judge him, and we accepted him for who he was. Took a few more years, but sure enough he came out. No one was surprised, and it was like a what else is new Joe, kind of moment and everyone carried on. We had a number of openly trans students, all of them had large stable groups of friends. I come from a great city with a great school system. Because across the bridge in our twin city, well signs were posted about a mayoral candidate calling him Hokai Chin and the opposition was shocked he found that racist. If that gives you any indication. Edit, Lewiston is the dark place of Maine, where Simba should never go. I think the biggest change regarding acceptance of gay students, where I was working at the time, Atlanta, was between 2000 and 2005. It also may have helped at my particular school, that one of the openly gay students beat up someone who tried to bully him. Nothing cools off off macho homophobes like the idea of being beaten by an effeminate gay student. My GF is a teacher, and she is amazed at how uncool drinking and driving is. Kids are like that stupid you will kill someone. They literally make fun of kids who do it. In my day everyone drove drunk. Very positive change. Edit. For the 20,000 plus people saying my username doesn't check out I'm going to have to ask you to do something risky and google hard gay man. If you don't want to do it, you're missing out. Yahoo. -oh. People who have hard gay in their lives, are better for it. I was in college right when Uber was introduced. My first year, everyone drunk and drove. I didn't drink till I was 20, so I was DD a lot luckily. But it was just something a bunch of people did. By the time I graduated, people were seen as reckless and stupid for driving after drinking. Just take an Uber, don't be a dick is a common phrase. It's really awesome was at a brewery a few years ago, and we saw some dude trying and failing to get into his car as he was drunk af. We kept telling him to get an Uber, but he was being an asshole. Finally we called the cops and the cops told him to get an Uber home, or they would arrest him. High school teacher here, the most admirable quality of the rising generation is their ability to take anything, and I mean anything, and turn it into a meme. And quickly, my god. 
Meme culture is basically just clothing slash fashion on hyperdrive. It takes an entire season for the latest back quote in clothing to change, that time frame turns into weeks for memes. Sometimes days. Shit, do you know the way he stopped being funny within hours? Remember these nuts? Yet a guy I know kept doing it for about a month. It didn't get funny again. I'm a teacher at a high school in Missouri. All of the stereotypes you hear slash see in rural high schools are still prevalent. However, almost every group works harder academically. It is no longer cool to get F's and fail. Even country boys who will never leave the farm or go to college care about getting passing grades. 600 plus students in our HSBTW. It doesn't really surprise me about the country boys. Contrary to popular belief, farmers in the US actually have to be knowledgeable in several fields. Heh, <laughs> now, the older generation knows this and encourages their kids in school when their own parents didn't see the use of it. Some of them are indeed out, standing, in, those, fields. Sigh. They're the cream of the crop, alright. Can confirm this was my experience growing up on a field. We had to know math, and we had applied learning. Fractions were quickly learned as it meant we knew how to mix dilutes in solutes to make solutions. Oh, we also knew our chemistry. Had to, because we had to know how to read the pH report and soil analysis of our fields. If we didn't it meant we didn't know how much nitrogen or other chemicals were needed in what fields. So in the long term, I did great with math and science due to my dad and mom knowing such things. I did quite miserably in English as sentence structure meant so little to me. Oh well. Are the stereotypes static or improving? What is making kids care about school more? Even kids who will be farmers or know they aren't going to college. The economy and how everything's tied together more, like for farmers, things happening far away from them. I'm in my mid 30s so this might not apply to the current thread for current students. But I had to know the weather like an amateur meteorologist. We studied conservation, so we knew the land, the animals, and the impact of keeping a balance. We knew chemistry from knowing what was in our soil, and how to produce greater yields by soil analysis. We had to know the markets, but not so much the business as much as what is going on in the world and trade flows. It didn't mean we had a say, it was just a should we sell now, or put the grain in the bin for a month. On top of that we had to save money, so we did our own repairs, which meant a lot of mechanical knowledge and awareness. We did our own carpentry on barns and fences. We repaired our own equipment and often I was tearing apart bearings and doing repairs in the field because we had to. Since dad and I were the only two we also had to know how to get mechanical advantage on things powerful enough to tear an arm off if it meant getting it to move. Knowing your learning and why makes a big impact on motivation to learn. That road memorization in a classroom drives most people nutty. Kindness. My college students are kind and supportive to one another most of the time. Why be mean to each other when we're all getting fucked? Only thing stressful is parking and the classes we absolutely don't study for. Either way I'm chill in my biscotto. Not the crippling debt that most college students acquire because tuition has skyrocketed over the years. Edit, I'm not saying that it's impossible to pay off. Yes, you can give up pretty much all of your free time and get a job or two in addition to being a full-time student, and if you're lucky, you will be able to pay it off after a few years of devoting every ounce of your energy and life to paying that one bill off. That still doesn't mean that it's not a large problem for many students. And that especially doesn't mean universities aren't unnecessarily gouging their students. Even all of my friends and my professors agree this is outrageous and excessively malicious. Just because you learn to justify it to yourself doesn't mean everyone else has to follow your faulty logic. Ahaha my teacher was always weirded out when my friends and I made study documents and shared them with each other and anyone who asked if they were doing the same question. They were invited. Teacher was always you know you're all competing against each other right? 
Edit. Fellas fellas. You're all getting a bit too angry about this so let me clear some things up. I go to school in Australia, so it's going to be different. The teacher who said this was joking, a concept which seems to be lost on many. He's not reprimanding us for helping, just amused by the thought that the threat of being ranked isn't stopping us from sharing cheat sheets. No one, not the teachers nor the students enjoys the ranked system or the fact that we get marked on a curve. That's such a bad attitude from the teacher. Why should students compete against each other? This is not Hunger Games. I mean when grades are curved the students are literally competing against each other. There will always be people not involved in the group study to bring down the average for the curve. Spouse to a high school teacher, she had to say, they were born into the internet and social media. It is not something they had to learn. Also as a result of which, they are also more self-reliant with research. And most importantly, contrary to the largest complaints, today's kids are extremely hardworking and are less judgy of nerds, less judgmental in general. My little sister, who is just 25, is a high school teacher and she says that being the smart, well-rounded kid is a cool thing. Being the asshole slacker isn't cool at all. I wonder if it's cyclical. We had enough slackers from the 80s and 90s that we can all see how lame it is. By now, everyone knows potential doesn't mean shit if you don't put in the work. Not a teacher, but I work in entertainment and I see the same trend. It's cool to be nerdy about something now. If you weren't a nerd for at least one thing then you are more of an outcast because you weren't taking the time to find your passion and contribute. They want to contribute. The majority of my students are in the 18 to 22 age range. I'm 37. For reference. Students are far kinder than they ever were when I was a student. They go out of their way to help each other, and they are much less judgmental than my cohort was. For the most part, they are really polite and respectful. I know a lot of professors deal with problems from cell phones, but I find that if I tell them to use their phones respectfully and only for class purposes, they do. The only real problem I seem to have with this cohort is the constant headphone wearing, but I think that's a battle I'm just going to lose. Edit. Wow. My inbox. Thank you all for responding about how headphones help you in class. For what it's worth, I allow students who need them to use them, provided they are registered with disability services. I also allow them in lab classes. It just gets really frustrating in lectures for me to have to repeat instructions because students couldn't hear over their headphones or when someone is too busy rocking out to listen to the lecture. I'm going to have to think of some strategies to help those students who need them while still making sure they're not being disruptive or missing important stuff. I know a lot of kids in this age group suffer with anxiety and use headphones it is a way to cope. Some aren't even listening to anything but use it as a way of saying, please don't talk to me, or having something familiar and calming to help them feel more at ease. Just a thought.